Are you selling your home and you want some tips and advice about your home inspection? Well, then this video is for you. Hi, Samantha Perlman here with the Perlman Property Group. In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you as a home seller about a home inspection, why it's important, and what to expect and prepare for it. Stick around to the end where I share a bonus tip. If you like this video, I hope you'll hit the thumbs up and share it with some friends and family. Now, if you're listing your home for sale, you might be saying, what is a home inspection and why is it important? I made another video specific to just that and I've linked it below. Go ahead and check it out. Now, if you've already watched this video, here are some great tips and advice to you as a seller in regards to the home inspection. My first tip is always going to be consider getting a pre-listing home inspection. This means while you're getting your home prepared to go onto the market, cleaning it out, decluttering it, staging it. I've also made some great videos on that. Go ahead and check them out below. Um, one of the things you might want to consider is getting the pre-home uh, pre-listing home inspection. You might be saying, well, I know the buyer is going to get a home inspection. Why the heck do I need to waste my money and do that now? You know, whatever I, whatever defects are, they're going to find them anyway. And that's exactly why I think you should get one. You see, doing the pre-listing inspection is actually going to help you find and discover, you know, some unknown defects in the home or something that might be major that could actually jeopardize the sale of the home later. You see, you live in the home every day and you might be blind to what um, defects there might be. You know, there might be something that broke a long time ago that you actually forgot to fix because it doesn't affect you every day. That's okay, we all do it. I have things in my home I know I need to repair right now, and certainly if I were gonna sell it, I would need to repair it, but it doesn't affect me on a day-to-day -day basis, so I kind of ignore it. It's okay, we all do it. Uh, but it's really important to know what those items are that are gonna be called out ahead of time so you can avoid those issues down the road. Also, the more defects a buyer finds in the home during the home inspection, the more they're gonna either ask for repairs or the, more, the higher risk you have of the buyer saying, there's just too many issues, I'm gonna walk away. So we certainly don't want that. I wanna get you to the closing table with the most amount of money in your pocket and as quickly as possible. So anytime you can find and discover and have the opportunity to fix those issues in the beginning before you even get the contract, it's going to help you in the long run. Now you might be saying, well, if I spent the money on a home inspection report, can I just share that with the buyers and they don't have to do one? Yes, absolutely. If you have the home inspection done and you've repaired everything on the inspection report, you can certainly share that with the buyers and show them proof that everything has been fixed. But don't be surprised if they decide to get their home inspection done independently as well. Sometimes they just wanna have you know, a third party perspective and they wanna have their own inspector come in that they've vetted. It's okay, they absolutely have the right to do that. Doing your home inspection ahead of time still saved you a lot of headache down the road. Now let's say you've sold your house, congratulations, you're under contract, and the next step is for your buyer to have their own home inspection. There are some great things that you can do to help get the home ready for the home inspection to ensure that that part of the process goes smoothly. Number one, leave any keys that are needed or necessary to access certain areas of the home. For example, if you have a detached garage, make sure to leave the garage door openers or any keys to the door so they can get into the garage. If you have things locked up, like for example, an electrical panel, leave those keys as well. Or any areas of the home that you might keep locked, let's say from children, uh, make sure you have keys and access to all of those areas and you have all the keys labeled so that the inspector can know how to access all those different areas. Number two, make sure all your pilot lights are on, regardless of the time of year. Even if it's summer, make sure the pilot is on for your furnace, make sure your stove pilot, your hot water heater, your fireplaces, etc. You wanna make sure that the home inspector can actually check all of those items at the time of the home inspection. You see, if you don't have the pilot light on for your furnace, the home inspector actually can't turn it on themselves. So therefore, they're not gonna be able to test the heating and either the buyer's gonna assume there's an issue or you're gonna to have to have the inconvenience of the home inspector coming back another day in time to inspect that once you've turned it on. So make sure all of those items are on and ready to go. Number three, present your home the same way you do for showings. Just as you would for showings in terms of picking it up and cleaning and making sure it's in show condition, you wanna do the same thing for the home inspection. You see, I have a lot of sellers that say, oh, I'm so glad I have a contract, I don't have to worry about 
you know, making sure all the dishes are clean and things like that. But you have to understand, you still have the prospective buyer coming over to the home. You still wanna give them the same impression that you gave them in the beginning. And when an inspector walks into a home that's nice and in show condition, their subconscious is going to, you know, assume that the home has been well taken care of and it could affect their perception a little bit as they're walking through the home. We wanna give you the best chance possible to have the best report possible. So make sure that you have the home uh, presented in the same way you would as a showing or prospective buyer. Number four, tidy up your basement and your attic spaces. You see, the inspector is not going to move all of those belongings around, but they need to have access to everything. They need to be able to have, oh, and your garage too. They need to be able to have a clear path to all the plumbing, all the fixtures, all the electrical. They need to be able to see things like roof rafters. <laughs> and ceiling joists and the foundation. If they can't access those items and they can't actually see those items, then they can't inspect them. And again, as I said earlier, the buyer may assume that there's an issue, um, or you may have to schedule another time to be inconvenienced for them to come back so they can inspect those items properly. Number six, clean up the landscaping and your yard, both in the front and the back so that the inspector can walk around and do the visual inspection of the exterior home and, and so they don't need a machete to get through all of your crazy landscaping. Uh, make sure they can um, walk up to the home, they can evaluate the drainage and the exterior, things like the condition of the siding and the windows and the roof. Again, we don't wanna have any obstructions for the inspector because they may assume the worst or they may have to come back. And number seven, the last thing is if the home is vacant and you've had any of your utilities turned off because it's vacant, it's really important that you turn those items back on. The home inspector needs to be able to check the plumbing, check the electrical, and check anything that's run by gas to make sure that everything's in proper working order. If any of those items or any of those utilities are not turned on during the home inspection, they're not going to be able to inspect those items. One of the questions my sellers ask a lot is, should I attend the buyer's home inspection? The answer might be controversial, but in my opinion, it's always going to be no for a couple of reasons. The first one is, you know, while you're there and attending the home inspection, the inspector and the buyers might really use this opportunity to ask you a lot of questions about the home. And you're going to be answering these questions thinking you're being really, really helpful. What might end up happening though, is you might actually inadvertently say something that could either jeopardize the sale or put you at risk legally. So I always say eliminate that risk or eliminate that possibility by not attending the home inspection. If they do have any questions, they can go through me as the realtor or their attorney and the proper channels, and we can really um, create the, the right answer that's gonna answer the question and not put you at risk. The other reason I think it's a good idea not to attend the home inspection is that a lot of sellers, and I'm guilty of this as well, you know, could take what the inspector says personal. You know, a lot of us, we've spent a lot of money on our homes, we've lived in them a long time, we've taken a lot of care, energy, and effort, sometimes blood, sweat, and tears into our home. And as a complete stranger is walking around the home and judging everything about the home, a lot of times we take it personal, even if it's a minor defect. And, and you have to understand, it's not personal. It's not personal. It's completely business and it's in everybody's best interest to do the home inspection. So I always say eliminate the possibility of you feeling judged <laughs> and don't attend the home inspection. You will get a copy of the report from the buyer's side afterwards and you'll have a chance to review it and go through it as well. If you have any questions about the home inspection that I haven't addressed here on this video, go ahead and leave a comment below with your question. Or if you have any funny or interesting home inspection uh, stories, go ahead and share them below because I'd love to hear them. If you like this video and you wanna watch other New Jersey real estate related videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that little bell so you're notified of new videos released every Monday. Here's a bonus piece of advice for you as the seller. Let's say you've gone through the buyer's home inspection, they've submitted the report and their list of repairs to you. Let's say there's some items on that list that are kind of major. Um, and, and I will say this, major issues, you know, it depends on perspective what could be a major issue, but I'll use some examples. Let's say there's some uh, leaks in the roof or a crack in the foundation or um, your electrical panel is not up to code. I mean, those are some pretty big items that most buyers are gonna expect to be repaired or replaced. 
um, and you as the seller say, no, 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 I'm not doing that. You know, I gave them a discount on the price or I've got three other buyers or whatever the case may be. And you just say, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. You have the right to do that. And then the buyer might say, I'm not going to buy the house and they're going to walk away. The chances of those defects showing up on the next buyer's home inspection report are pretty good. So if they found a crack in the foundation with your first buyer, the second buyer's home inspector is going to find the same crack in the foundation. So you need to think about that when you're negotiating these items. And are you willing to take extra time on the market, extra time under contract, which at the end of the day is going to cost you more money in holding costs, property taxes, maintenance, possibly a mortgage on the property, to ultimately decide that you're going to fix this defect for this other buyer. Because if you don't, nobody's really going to buy the house or close on it or you're going to have to discount the property so that the buyer is willing to take on this defect. You have to think about what is important to you and what your goal is with selling the home. I hope you found this information helpful. Happy house selling. Things like roof raptor, roof raft, raptor. <laughs> I can't say that word. Roof rafters. 